Hello, and welcome to Dictionary Definitions for Gamers. Today we're looking at the word deluxe. Deluxe means adjective, luxurious or sumptuous of a superior kind. Used in a sentence like a deluxe hotel. You done. Hey guys, welcome to another Broken Meeple review, and today I'm taking a look at a deluxe... <laughs> it's gonna be a bit of a recurring theme in this episode. Deluxe version of Innovation. Now, Innovation, if you've ever kept up with any of my written reviews in the past, is a game that I adore. This featured, I believe, in the top 20 of my top 100, and my written review praised it. I love Innovation. I get why some people don't like it, Perfectly. If you don't like it, fine. But for me, innovation just, I don't know, it sings to me. It is a pure tactical card driven game where you are laying out cards that are based on technologies that range from age 1 to age 10, from prehistoric to modern, and essentially they all have varying powers and effects that you can trigger on your turn in order to do all sorts of combo y shenanigans. The idea is that you will constantly be playing these cards and doing other stuff with cards against your opponent who will be doing the same. Uh, you'll be um, sort of building up symbols in quantity that allow you to either force your opponent to do stuff or allow you to share your opponent's effects. And basically you constantly go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until you have claimed enough achievements or dominations to win the game. That's the simplistic overview. It can be played up with four players, but don't ever do that. <laughs> Seriously, some people call this game chaotic. You want chaotic, play this with four players. Trust me, it is ridiculous. I've tried the team game, mitigates it to an extent, but still, four players, no. Three players, fine, not bad, but really, this is one of my favorite two-player games. It is just so much fun as a head-to-head -head two player game, but definitely one for gamers. Do not show new gamers this under any circumstances, it will just completely brain freeze them. You know, but otherwise, I'm not gonna say too much more about innovation itself as a game. You know, just take it from me, go watch my uh, written review, I'll put a link in the description. And it was an old review, so written and probably slightly different style, but it was still a review, I love it. Um, I think I even put it on Zatu Games recently as well, so you might be able to go uh, read that review. But suffice to say, love the game. So what's this deluxe version? Well, basically, the you know Asmali Games have brought out this version, which has not only the third edition reprint, but also all the expansions to date, including uh, one or two new ones. I, I think it's just the one new one, but I, I digress. But all these different expansions for innovation. Now, normally innovation comes in a very thin sort of a cardboard box, and all the expansions uh, currently released also come in those thin boxes, in case you just want to cherry pick your favorites. This one, though, basically gives you one box with all of them in. Apart from that, no other difference. You know, you just have a you know, black and gold exterior, you have a, you know, a more sort of thick, you know, bigger rule book with more pictorial examples, you know, certainly better, I think, than some of the other rule books. I'll give it um, in the smaller sets. And aside from that, it just gives you all the cards you ever need, and that's about it. So first off, let's get on to this point about the deluxe part, and just get that out of the way, okay? When I think deluxe, and when you think deluxe, do you think, you know, expensive, luxurious, Great quality, thought. Let me think, let me show you some, um, well, let me show you. Let me just reiterate some deluxe examples. Um, Takinoko Deluxe, humongous bamboo pieces, giant pandas, and gardener figures. Ultimate quality in a giant cube box. That's what deluxe really kind of means, even if that is a little bit over the top. Uh, another example, 
Up here you can't see it, but I have Deluxe Takedo. Large box. Large pretty board. Sumptuous artwork. Minis. An insert designed to hold everything. Even though it's not 100% perfect. But grandiose and beautiful and love it. And metal coins even to boot. Uh, I think of anything else that's been called Deluxe. Uh, well, not even Deluxe, just Scythe. You know, come on, Scythe might as well be a deluxe game for all the cool bits you get in that, you know, and that's just a normal game. But then, if you imagine that you could buy the retail version or the, it's not deluxe, but collector's version, which had the realistic resources, the metal coins, the bigger board, etc. That's what I'm thinking for deluxe, okay? This is what this version thinks the word deluxe means. You have a square box. It's a bit small, but it is a card game. We'll give it that. It's black and gold. It's a little bit shiny. Okay, fair enough. Uh, we'll just uh, get these boards out of the way because they have to sit on the top. Why do you ask? Yeah. Really. Really, really. This is what their impersonation of the word deluxe means. I kid you not. This was actually a full... This is upside down, this insert. The insert was actually the other way up. And it basically just had, effectively, a Fantasy Flight game style trench with all the cards and shrink wrap. That was it. Nothing else. No dividers. No, you know, holders. No set areas to put cards. Nope, that was it. Just the trench and a bunch of cards. I have had to literally turn it upside down so that I get two trenches, not one. Hee <laughs> hee, good idea. And then nick some polystyrene blocks. These do not come in the box, by the way. I have liberated these from some of my old uh, Marvel Legendary boxes. Keeping spares is always a good thing. And I have literally cut away the other trench so that I could fit some cards and a polystyrene block in the middle. And of course, I have uh, sleeved all the cards because innovation does require a lot of shuffling and tucking and all that stuff. And splaying. <laughs> this is what I've had to do to a deluxe game. This is not how you design a deluxe game, or deluxe insert for that matter. This is just poor. Absolutely poor. You know, granted I can fit everything into one box, but are you really trying to say that for deluxe, this was as much effort as you were going to put into an insert? Not even just dividers and that. I mean, in fact, here we go. Uh, let's see if I can get it out. I'll just move that out of the way. And here we go, come on. Oh god, this is a heavy one. It's gonna break my spine. Here we go. Ah. Recognize this. This was a box you bought for about 15 quid or so. The big geeky box. Came with one faction, but it was mainly just a box. You know, nothing else. Okay, so you think for 15 quid, that's a bit much. Yeah, um, all my smash up stuff is in here. In the one box. And granted, there's a few like rule books on the top, so I'm just gonna get something out to sort of show. These, um, tilt the box, um, all right, fine, we'll just have to, there we go. That is a glossy plastic divider with artwork, title, and everything. There are loads of these in the box, and every set of Smash Up has been coming out with more of these, and it makes storing this thing, apart from the fact that I have to put rule books on the top, you know, a dream. Everything is sorted, I can bring this out and get it set up within minutes. Even non-deluxe games, like my Sentinels of the Multiverse, for example, came with artwork dividers. And yeah, it was mainly just a box of old cards, but at least it had dividers. This has none of that. And when you consider, after you, watch, after you read my other review, that you need to have at least 10 separate decks of cards for the base game, let alone if you include the expansions, which have cards for each of those 10 decks, you're supposed to have them out and be able to manipulate them, you know, draw from them, tuck stuff underneath them, whatever, all the time. This is a game that is crying for a decent insert, you know, or a box that has like, you know, slanted dividers so that you can easily draw the cards in and out of. In fact, go on Board Game Geek, there's a couple of people who have managed to use those uh, hobby cases from uh, US art stores, and they're brilliant. Shame we haven't got anything decent in the UK to go with that. No, I'm actually having to have discussions with basically Wooden at the moment in order to see if one of their future upcoming boxes is good enough to hold all the cards from here and be practical in a game situation. I will pay them money to do this rather than keep this box. That is how 
that is how disappointed I am with the word deluxe for this box and insert. It just why, why, why? That is such a shame. Mr. Mark there cannot say much more about that. Right, rant out of the way. Let's get on to the good stuff. Yeah, there is a good side to this review. The game itself and the expansions. Well, like I said, read my review, you will see how much I love this game. So what are these expansions? You know, most people have not played Innovation with the expansions, and that's assuming you played Innovation at all. It comes with Echoes of the Past, uh, Figures in the Sands, uh, Cities of Destiny, I think it's called, and Artifacts of History. These are each expansions that you can combine all together or just use one at a time to your heart's content, and they all add different things. Now, first up, Innovation is not a newbie game. This is not a gateway game in any way, shape, or form. This is a gamer's card game. Adding too many of these expansions will make it a brain burner. Now, if you are used to innovation and you've played it enough times, then fine, add them in, great. I mean, I can get used to, I could play this with all the expansions, but then I like innovation and I've played it enough times to get it. But even then I'm gonna be like, oh my God, the options, overwhelming. You know, it can happen. But you could easily just add in one expansion at a time and tweak your game to your heart's content. And they do, all the expansions actually work pretty well, just some are more complex than others. So let's go through them in turn and just give a brief overview of each one. Uh, the simplest one is the newest one. The one that I think came only in this set, or at least with third edition, and that is Artifacts of History. It is a very straightforward expansion where you have these artifact cards that will come into play depending on whether you cover your, you know, you basically have piles of cards in front of you. If you cover a pile with a lower level card than the one before, you have a potential of getting an artifact card, and basically these have effects that compel your opponent to do certain things. Normally you have demand effects, where if you have more symbols than your opponent, you force them to do something bad. Compel works the other way round. If your opponent has more symbols than you, you again force them to do something they probably wouldn't want to do. It's a very simple tweak to a rule that if you know base innovation, you can easily implement. Aside from that, there's one or two little variants of these lost cards, which are kind of weird. To be honest, I don't use them. The five cards would be do. It's not like I'm missing much. But it's a very straightforward expansion if you already know how to play Innovation. It's almost one that you could literally throw into every game. It is that simple. If you know base Innovation, you literally just tweak two concepts that you're already familiar with. And that's Artifacts of History. Very straightforward. Does it make a lot of difference? Well, ish. I mean, it's cool that it actually gives you an incentive to put lower level cards on top of your bigger cards. I mean, there are some times where that's good anyway, but this one gives you an extra incentive. And those decree effects are very powerful, so there's an incentive to go after them, as well as nick them from your opponent because they count towards your victory condition. That's artifacts. Take it or leave it, but I think it's half decent. And like I say, it's such an easy include if you're familiar with the game. Now we'll move on to the Cities of Destiny. This is also a relatively simple expansion to add, but yes, you must be familiar with the base game before you even try it. Essentially, it adds cards which have city names on them, like Jakarta, for example, and they don't have any text. They're just symbols, more symbols. The idea being that if you have a city card, then it allows you to do an endorse action, which allows you to do the abilities on a card twice in the same action. That's pretty much the deal. I mean, there's a little bit more added to it. You know, the icons on the city card allow you to get a few bonuses here and there, but for the primarily, you have the city card to basically add to your symbols that you already have and allow you to double the effect of dogma, um, dogma actions. It's what they call them, but basically powered dogma abilities, whatever you want to call it. You know, the terminology in this game is a little weird. But yeah, that's pretty much it. But you want to be familiar with how the effects work in order to decide whether doubling them is a decent thing. But otherwise, the cities is a pretty solid include, and I like the idea of just... I mean, I know this is an abstract game, really. There's not really much of a theme, but having cities that actually exist, I don't know, just feels quite good, as well as when you combine them with the technologies. It's almost like you're telling a bit of a story. So, cities, another decent expansion, and one that you could probably auto-include once you're familiar with the game. The Figures of the Sand is the next one, and this one is a bit more complicated than the others, but not the most complex. We'll get onto that one in a minute. Figures in the Sand basically has cards that have characters on them from history, and you are probably not going to recognize 90% of these characters. 
Seriously, in fact, you're probably not even going to be able to pronounce a good quarter of them. There are some obscure people in here. I know, I know, if you're a history buff, you might know them all. But, yeah, I was looking at them thinking, huh? Who on earth are you? Oh well, don't care, abstract game anyway. But by claiming these figure cards, they essentially give you abilities that trigger when you do something, or instead of doing something. It will tell you on the card what the trigger is, and basically when you meet that condition, the effect goes off. But you're only able to have one figure out on top at any time, after that you have to discard the excess, but you get to choose which ones. They can be tucked away underneath the cards, that's great, but only one on top, which kind of makes sense, you only want one figure around. Other than that, you have Inspire effects, which works similarly to an Echo effect that we're going to get onto later. But basically what happens is when you splay the cards, you might see these uh, spotlights where, you know, spotlight areas where there's more text. These are additional abilities. By doing an Inspire action, you look at the bottom and go all the way to the top of the pile and trigger off all the visible spotlight abilities that you can see. After doing so, you effectively draw a card off the top of a deck, depending on what the top card was. It's a pretty straightforward one to do, because you don't have to worry about triggering off the actual abilities on the top card. We'll get onto that one a bit later. But this one is just, all oh, these little bonus abilities. I can trigger all those and draw a card. You know what? That's better than just simply drawing a card. I will do that. So that is a neat little addition to this uh, expansion as well. And aside from that, you just have these decree cards, which are basically powerful effects. They're like achievements, except they can be stolen from you. So it's a back and forth thing. And then we get on to probably the hardest expansion to include in this entire set, and that is Echoes of the Past. It is a great expansion. I love playing with it. But wow, is it a bit of a brain burner when you get it in there. Basically, it does. It only really does two like main things, but... Yeah, it really does burn your brain. It adds a new set of cards for each age, and rather than them being technologies, they are inventions. So, previously you were playing with stuff like archery, engineering, gun power, that sort of thing. And then suddenly you have toothbrush, pencil, ruler, uh, you know, spade, I don't know, all these really random items. And they function in the same way as other cards. They have abilities that you can trigger and they have symbols. But they're a nice neat addition and it adds to the variety in the game because these you will get out almost as commonly as you will other cards. Here's where the complex bit comes in. Two abilities these bring. First off, foreshadowing. You will be able to foreshadow cards, which means you will take a card and you will tuck it underneath your player board. It's currently out of the game. But what happens is later on, when you play a card that is of an equal or higher level than that one, you can then play that card from your board and instantly trigger the effect on it for free. That takes some planning. That takes some thinking. But it's pretty sweet when you pull it off. And it's a good way to have cards there thinking, oh, if I do this now... That's perfect, yeah, it's been sitting there and all of a sudden it's great because not every ability is useful all the time but you just reach that timing window where it's like, yes, pull out that card, use it, perfect, nice great combo. It's a cool ability but does require a little bit of forethought and planning and definitely not one you want to show a new player. And then finally, the Echoes. The Echoes, again, are a great ability but they are very, like, they can draw the game out a bit. You remember the Inspire uh, ability I talked about from Figures in the Sand? Same thing, except you look at the bottom of the deck, you work your way up, trigger all the Echo effects, then trigger the ability on the top. Whoa! By the time you've gone through a lot of these Echo effects and done that ability, your action took a fair while to get done. So like I say, this one is going to add to the time length of the game. But you can pull off some crazy combos with these Echoes, and it is great to get them. In addition, you've got some bonus points you can get and little minor things like that. But really, this expansion is for those Echoes and for Foreshadowing. Both are great additions, but by no means are they suitable for new players. I would not include Echoes with a new player. I would not include Figures with a new player. Hell, to be honest, I wouldn't include any expansion with a new player. Get them used to the base game first. I honestly could not recommend doing that enough. Once they're happy with the base game, Maybe throw in artifacts or cities, you know, as a nice little twist. And then if they're familiar with that, then you can move on to something like Echoes and Figures. Because otherwise, I think those two expansions are just too hard for a casual player to this game. 
And that is one thing I do have about innovation in general, and even this deluxe set. I love this game so much, but I can't get it to the table very much because there's only one person I know who is enough of a player at innovation that he can challenge me at it. I'm not saying I'm fantastic at the game, no, 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 no. But I've had more experience with it. I understand the rules more. I'm constantly having to teach this to new players and they struggle with triggering off these abilities and getting used to the cards and everything that I can't throw in expansions and whatnot. So I have one friend that I bring this out for as often as I can because we can understand these rules and we can go at each other. So it's, like I said, the rule book gives you ideas on how to teach the game and it's not the rules that are complicated, even though they use weird terminology like meld for play and dogma for ability and domination for achievement, you know, it's kind of annoying. But it's just what you do with the abilities and what you should be aiming for and how you should defend against your opponent's attacks. That takes some, you know, time to get used to, you know, even if the rules are simple. So, not new gamer friendly, but certainly a blast if you can do it. And that's pretty much all I can say about this. There's four expansions and the base game in this box. It is deluxe only in that you have the complete collection of innovation, and if you love the game as much as I do, that's more than enough reason to get this set. But if you want to, you know, tweak... You know, which ones you get, you could always just get the small boxes one at a time and see what they're like, but then you're going to have a problem storing it. Although, to be honest, this isn't exactly the best storage solution either. I highly recommend you have some third-party storage version, you know, something like a box with a custom insert that you've made yourself, or in my case, I'm going to wait until I see a wooden, like, CCG box with dividers, and then I'm going to buy one of those, big one, enough to hold, um, I think each box, I think each set has 105 cards, so I'm expecting to have... 525 cards sleeved that can fit into a nice wooden box with dividers. That would be ideal. If someone can engrave it with innovation on the top, even better, but I'll just take the storage solution. Other than that though, I do like it. It's worth the cost if you want all the expansions cheaper than if you bought all the individual games separately. Otherwise, grab the normal innovation box and then cherry pick them as you will. Either way, I highly, highly recommend you try Innovation out, it is such a good tactical card game, one of my favourites of all time, easily top 25 in my top 100. Again, you've probably already seen the thing flash on the screen telling you what position it is because I keep forgetting to put the top 100 in front of me when I do these videos. Oh well, I digress. So that's it for me, I'm going to give this box personally a rating of only... S hmm. I can only really give it a rating, personal GG rating of 5. Because innovation, I give a rating of 9, almost 10. In fact, I'm teetering between 9 and 10. That's how much I love innovation. And these expansions are great. I love these expansions. But the box and how little effort they put into a storage solution for this and just literally lumping you with a basic box, no dividers, an FFG trench, and no sleeves, no nothing, is just unforgivable for anything that dares to put the word deluxe on something. That was a Kickstarter. This was a Kickstarter. Can you imagine the people who paid money for this on Kickstarter and got this box? Seriously, can it have not been a stretch goal or something? I don't know, but I digress. Fantastic game, great expansions, rubbish box. So that's it for me. I'll see you on the next review. Take care, and no matter how much rage you're gonna have at shouting at a box, it's still only a game, so just play it and enjoy it. See you next time, guys. Take care.